Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. The three of us are in studio together to untangle the web that is the trade deadline. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, brought to you by SeatGeek. My name is Jimmy, his name is Trev, and his name is Jake, BBD, also behind the dish producing episode number 693, trade deadline preview. We got our first trade, Kike, to the Dodgers, back to the Dodgers. They need short stops. We're going to get a lot of trades coming up. We're actually going to be at like a photo shoot. Breaking trades, I guess. I don't know how that's going to work, but it'll be fun. Trev, oh good to see you. It's good to be here. Back in the city, the vibes are high. Uh, tough travel day for Coach Trev and the fam, but uh, we made it. And I loved being able to grab a coffee and then walk in here, say hi to everybody in person instead of... Did you have a donut? No, I haven't. I No, I don't put that in my body. I but know. be able to touch Jake whenever I want is just something real special. So speaking of touching, I know we're going to touch on a bunch of trades. Oh, my God, Jake. Is that a corduroy shirt? Trades. I don't know what material this is. How are you, Jake? It looks Jake? hot. Is it not a hot material? It's not bad. It's a, it's a breathy shirt. Trev, James, BBD. Uh, good having Trevor in person. Uh, yeah, your touching theory. I, uh, I just kind of had a moment. Like, normally if I have, like, if I need to toot mid-up, like, yeah. I'm not worried. Like we're not know, a we're problem. spaced out kind of evenly. If okay. I if I hit you with that lean to, I could I could take you. I out wouldn't for love a that. I would prefer <laughs> yeah. it that way. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I thought of that. So, but that he doesn't go that way. I don't. I can't. Go <laughs> oh, that. it's tough. that's my weakness. Yeah. Jaylen can't Brown, go left. No left. Yeah. <laughs> um, that guy's uh, he's doing all right. Not bad. Uh, how are you doing, James? I'm doing well. I'm tired, but uh, that's just because I don't sleep a lot. Mm. Oh, maybe a baby. Analytics. Two in diapers. We're dumb. One trying to drown himself nonstop. <laughs> That's parenthood. The beach is a mess. I was like <laughs> crying for help. He just runs into the water. So I was trying to let him get scared because I want him to stop being fearless. Sure. And he gets, he runs in, the water comes, it's waist high, he drops to the ground and then, you know, he lets the wave float him up and he's like looking up and then he like hooks his hand into the sand so when it pulls him back in the ocean he spins around but he messes up sometimes he's underwater and i literally grab him like you do like an animal like mm. by one limb and just like yank him up mm. and he just looks at me and goes wow more mm. oh fuck future navy seal yeah he's nuts yeah that's what i got from that he's nuts is that uh noah song wasn't that the kid that was the uh was he in yeah. the navy and pitching for the phillies Yes. Oh, there you go. Far. Okay. He's IL. A, he gets reference on this team a lot. Shout out Griffin sure. Jacks. What? Yes. What? All right. We have, uh, we're going to look at the, some buyers here of players. Rentals. Yes. That's mm. the easiest way to sort it out. Maybe some year and a half. And then organize it by teams. Because the one thing, it's almost like free agency where, okay, these five teams all are looking for a playoff starting pitcher. Well, these are the ones available so say you want a playoff starting pitcher, but the Dodgers just got Giolito. Okay, so now where do you pivot to? Last year, the Yankees wanted a starting pitcher. Castillo goes to the Marlins. Okay, where do they pivot to? Mariners. Injured Fra Mariners. In same team. Injured Frankie Montas. Yeah. Shit, we didn't what? get Castillo. Let's get... Is there anyone injured? Like, I... I think we're about to get into it, but uh, I, I think we, we want to stumble into a few things. I think one of the things I like, a team I fell into is the Phillies because they kind of have their high-end guys that I think they, like for them, I think they can play the market and like whatever starting pitching value-wise falls to them. Like they can be like, well, if that guy ends up being our five, cool. If they end up going nuts, that's nice. But we still have Wheeler, Nola, like that's where we're at. So I, I hope we find some of the trade chain of command a little bit. Um, and yeah. Well, what team would you say is looking for a, a one, two, three starting pitcher? Like they want to trade for someone that will take the ball in a wild card series. If the Phillies you don't have on there and the Rays, they need pitchers, but I don't have them on there. The Dodgers, Trev, do you think they're trading for that high end of a starter? And this is Trev's seat geek team of 
the episode that he's yeah. about he's been preparing since he's yes. since his flight got delayed. Trading for a pitcher, people will buy seats to see. Right, one hundred percent. There's seventy thousand events every day. Trevor's flight. He actually went to go see an event in Baltimore really quickly yeah. at the Baltimore airport, yeah, and I did. then back to New York. Download the SeatGeek app. It's so easy to use. I was watching the Yanks and the Mets tee off last night. Uh, some nice seats. Left field. Don't normally sit out there. Interesting Ugh. crowd. But it's Jake. good. Jake. SeatGeek app. It's good to get the This angles. is a red bubble. It's bad. Ooh, okay. Red bubble, bad. Green is good. Use code TALK and $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Click the link in the description. Download the app. Go watch a game. Go watch your new player on Trevor Plouffe's new team. The Mets. Okay. I'll be rooting for them tonight at Yankee Stadium. I use SeatGeek to purchase my tickets to bring my family to a Yankee game to root for the Mets. So how about that? Damn. Yeah. What do you think, the Dodgers? I think the Dodgers don't need a high-end starting pitcher, but they, I think they need some depth there. As really? You don't think they want to? Like, well, there's, there's a fine high-end, I guess. You Top know. three. Going to make gonna make a they playoff start. They want that, but you know, I think that any team that needs a starting pitcher would prefer to land one of those guys, but I don't think necessarily they're the number one team that needs to add a one. I think you could look at the Orioles. I think you could look at the Reds as two teams that I think are looking for more of that high-end starting pitching. I think those two teams are going to make a splash somehow. Um, I would I would say those are my would be above the Dodgers as far as like the high end, you know, whether it be I don't know if there's a, a, a Strowman or something the, like that. Well, Strowman has been pitching like a one all yeah. year. Um, Giolito is good. I don't know. Is there a one? Like, is there? Yeah, there's not really Snell. like a, I think I think if Snell becomes. Available. I think Snell and yeah, Str- I think yeah, Snell yeah. and Strowman are that. I th- I have Snell currently because they kind of said that they're going to go for it, but um. I could see the Dodgers trading. Verlander, like the Mets are still in play. Like it's just, it becomes a lot more complicated. Yeah. Those are really complicated conversations to have with the Mets and Scherzer. Well, because he has, they both have no trade clause. A lot of these they guys They both have do. no trade clauses and next year as well for tons of money. So yeah. it's just like a little messy. Um, Dylan Cease, I guess. Yeah, also another year available, and hasn't been great. I think he's two and a half, so he's like, yeah, he hasn't been trade. lighting the world on fire. Yeah, so I don't know if he comes over and I, you're just like, hey, give him the ball, run with it. Erod's been an ace when he's been healthy. His, his numbers are great. Obviously, Shohei. I mean, we, that's the mm. big yeah. caveat here is if he ends up going anywhere, which we're, I, you know, every day you hear a different thing about that. Shohei's very interesting because you need the two-way thing. No, oh. six-man rotation. Like you, you still need a six pitcher to ride out the rest of the season, and then I'm very curious what he looks like in the postseason without with a shortened rotation, or what's the most common amount of rest for starters? It's not a six man rotation. They with the built in go- off days, there's funny business to be done. Like you can, I, I read one article was about if the Yankees were gonna do it. That was that like laid out like if they went. If every series went the full way, he'd get games like one, four, two of the next series. Here's the thing about Shohei is if you trade for him and he is going to be purely a rental for you. Yeah. Like, how much do you really care about his next season being affected? If you don't think you're going to resign him. And didn't he, didn't he throw in the WBC on his throw day? Like, I know. Yeah, he, he came back and came struck out, Mike Trout. Well, it wasn't a start. It right. was out of pen. Yeah, but yeah. I, you know, Shohei's got that dog in him. Oh, my gosh. Stop. I'm, I'm getting... Excited over him here. on the snakes. Oh, we're saving that to the end. Um, All right. So what's the what's the market? So for you starting think, pitchers? so you st- you kind of throw out the Dodgers because you think they want a guy. Yeah, the, they okay. should get a guy. Okay. Their rotation has been, um, well, it hasn't been that good. I mean, you're looking at not great numbers in the last like month at least over the course of the year. It's just been a lot of different names. Grove had to change his pants. Yeah, I mean, look, Grove's I've, been good his last two starts or so. But yeah, if you look, I was looking at the numbers over the last month, and like, I don't know, they're also just like you're talking about the playoffs. You want a guy that's maybe if a guy that's been there, a guy that's some more miles on him as a one, two, three. Yeah, I guess the only caveat there, because you know, they could if if things go healthyish the rest of the way, they still, could still go into a playoff rotation with Urias, uh, Gonsolin, and Kershaw. Exactly. So like. I, and I think the other thing they have going for them is they're they're the Dodgers where you know they tapped into the Heen Dog like they they could go and get a guy that we didn't list as 
Oh, I think the other guys, the other way is they're the Dodgers. Like a they Lance could go. Lynn and they could Kevin go offer him. more and get Giolito and place him as their three pitcher than the Orioles could and place him as their one, or the Reds could and place him as like they're they the, could they do have, anything. They have much more trust and capital in their system than these other teams. Besides the Orioles, they have a really good system right now. Yeah, I I wonder it's how much of their youth are they going to sacrifice? We wondered this off season if they were going to put the chips in a little more and they didn't. So are they waiting for the deadline? Is it Shohei sweepstakes next year? I don't know. Yeah, because there's things to consider with the Dodgers as far as, like, they wanted to stay under that competitive balance tax as well to reset so they can have a better chance of getting Shohei. So, you know, bringing in a Verlander type, someone that's owed a lot of money would be interesting for them. So I think they're they're going to they're gonna see how the market unfolds. I don't think they're going to be, like, the first aggressor and go. I think they'll kind of wait because they don't have to. That's, that's, that's where I'm at with the Dodgers. I yeah, think they'll but get I, think somebody. Gonna, I think everyone's going to call them up. Yeah, I think, like, say the the team hears the offer from the Reds, I think they're going to go, hey, L.A. Like, they're going to get a chance because their farm system's good. They have a lot of prospects. And, and a lot of – if you're getting, like, a pitcher back, you know, like a triple-A or quadruple-A pitcher back, like, you're going to want to – You're saying move. teams want to trade with the Dodgers because they're going to get their farm system. I think they're going to want, like, the return the Dodgers offer over the Reds. I don't know. It just depends. We don't know what the Reds are. up a ton of kids. Yes, but the Dodgers have been doing it for a decade now. That's true. Which is hard to do in uh, to groom pitching. It's like the Guardians, the Dodgers, the Rays are like the three teams that have been able to really graduate starting pitching. Uh, the Reds, I love the Reds going after a true rental. Like I don't know if they're going to go get a two-year guy, a Seas guy, or someone else. But a true rental, absolutely. The city deserves it. They deserve it. You don't have to pay that much and add someone to the rotation. Had two, yeah. I mean, I mean, they've been they've been hurt by injuries this year. They're they're definitely going to go and be players in this market, uh, and they could be buyers and sellers because we've heard what they're trying to do with Jonathan India. They have all these guys that are shortstops. They're trying to figure out ways to get them in the lineup. Um, they have a deep farm system. They have players at the major league level, like too many players at the major league level. Like they're going to be one of the teams that might be shipping some people off, but also bringing in needs, which for them, I, I really think it's a veteran starter because you have Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo, Lodolo coming back. Abbott's been really good. The other guys in the rotation have been hit or miss. Some good starts, a lot of bad starts. Um, the offense has... When they were going off, the offense was what was carrying them. So they can deal from that little position of depth, bring in a starter. I think they're them and the Orioles, to me, are the two teams that I think are going to be very, very aggressive because they do have a ton of prospect capital, maybe so much that they don't have to deal like their top guys. They can offer more of like the bottom of their, you know, the top 100 prospects and, and bring people in. Th- this, these windows for these teams are, are hot. And I would love to see one of them. To me, I think the crown jewel if i had to say of the starting pitching class and we're get, get shohei out of here and and even um even guys like a giolito i'm not going to talk about them i think it's stroman and, and erod i think those two guys i think if they get traded they would be open to signing extensions a la what luis castillo did with the mariners last year that's been such a great trade for the Mariners. If they didn't have Ira or uh, Castillo, it'd be a completely different thing going on there up there in Seattle. So I think they're interested in that. You have this window. Let's go, you know, get our rental and see if we can extend these guys, because this is what we need to put us over the hump essentially. Yeah. I think the the Reds and the Orioles are the interesting. I think they're the power players in the market. The Reds have called up all this young talent The Orioles have called up all this young talent. And it's how far do you want to put the chips in? Where the Reds are interesting is Jonathan India. You can scratch the itch of a team who wants to, like, kind of show their fan base, like, hey, we got something back. Like, I know you mentioned Cease briefly. Um, You know, if you're the White Sox and you can say, like, oh, well, okay, so we'll pencil India in and we got three prospects and the Reds can say we got a starting pitcher for a couple years. I don't know. I think it's funny that I think both of those teams would love to hit up a team, whether it's the White Sox or maybe it's the Cardinals in, like, a Monty Jordan Hicks trade and get a starter and a reliever. And I wonder if those two kind of end up in, like, we're looking for that tier situation. Like, it feels like the Reds and Orioles are playing in the same sandbox. 
That's the thing, though. It's like we, we want to talk and be specific about teams and, oh, this guy can go there, this guy fits there. The bottom line is at this point in the season, everyone's had some injuries. So you understand the importance of starting pitching depth. Everyone knows that. So every team is looking for starters. There are, there are yeah, tiers. I want more of like, like a playoff caliber. We're going to put them into our rotation or an innings eater. But everyone needs starting pitching, and everyone, everyone is like, we could upgrade the bullpen. Yeah. There's not one bullpen out there that's like, we're set. You, you want to shorten the games, and that's why relievers are usually the most pricey as far as like you know innings and what you have to give up to, to get them. Uh, I think we're overlooking a team uh, in this situation as well, the Rangers. I think they're going to be super aggressive in the market too. Like They're a team I think that's going to surprise people. Their, their front office is – they've done such a good job and they want to keep that going. I mean, there's no limit to what I think that they could look to add at this point. They understand the Astros are right behind them. They understand the position they put themselves in, the roster they've built. And, you know, these guys, what happens with the front offices is that they get, they're so close and they can taste it. And they're like, okay, we we got here. The Rangers have, you know, I don't know if they've surprised everyone they surprised me, but I think they knew internally that they were going to be good this year. And now it's like, let's get over that hump. We're, we're, we're good. Let's be great. I'm interested in that. I still like Monty to the Orioles. They need a lefty in their rotation. And I think Monty is interesting because he is an innings eater. Like, he'll give you six every time. I think he averages six innings, which these days is an inning eater. And he's also made 20 starts. He's pretty reliable. And they have all righties in their rotation, the Orioles. They need a left, lefty where the Rangers are pretty balanced. Mm-hmm. They have um, um, Perez and Heaney. I don't know if they're all getting playoff starts. Yeah, Perez has been really struggling lately. That's where the Ranger fans have been saying, like... But he's down, down in it. They need one. But, like, all righties for the Orioles, they need a lefty arm. Sure. And maybe they need some miracle-made sheets. Ooh. You know? Uh, these are on the bed right now, live. Uh, and temperature at night can have... One of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality. Inspired by NASA, Trev. I know that was a backup route for you. Uh, Self-cleaning and designed for your skin. These sheets are infused with... Silver. Yes, sir. That prevents... Vampires can't use them or werewolves. Either one of them. Uh, It prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth that can clog your pores. Ooh, Keep your skin fresh. Mm. That's important. Go to trymiracle.com slash talking to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save 40%. If you use our promo code TALKING at checkout, you get three free towels. Bong. Bong. There's your towels. There's your sheets. And you save an extra 20%. My goodness. They've got 100% satisfied 30 days. If you're not, you get a full refund. My goodness. Mir- trymiracle.com slash talking code talking towel set sheets click the link in the description go trade for them right now what, who cash considerations who can't uh, have silver around them is that a werewolf <laughs> I don't know you Ooh, said it confident I'm out I don't know that yeah okay you want to move on to bats sure Mookie bats this is all speculative. I feel like when it comes to bats, like it's very, it's much tougher to do. Yeah, you kind of know the pitchers. One that are weakness be on the of market. any werewolf is silver. Well, why don't we take like a player like Bellinger's going to get traded? He's a rental. He's having a great year. The <laughs> is Cubs. he going to be traded? I. Mm. It's like yeah, you think so, but when? <sighs> why wouldn't he? Because if you're the Cub, I don't know, man. I understand how they do business. We've talked about that on our show, and 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 Chris Rose is very adamant in talking about that, but. Why not, if you can, look to keep him there? He's having success. Like, you want to be competitive. Sometimes, like, if you're a front office, don't you want to say, like, hey, fuck it? Like, let's, even, let's even keep the want, boys together a little bit. Let's see what we can do. if you want him back, you'd probably sit him down and be like, hey, if you want to sign with us, our best chance of being even better next year is by getting some in return. You go get some playoff rep. Like, teams have done that before. Oh, try. man. Yeah, I know. They're not, like, super in the hunt right now. They're on the fringe. That's why they're... I still have a little bit of hesitancy when you talk about him, but man, like yeah, I, I, I'm assuming too, as you did, that he is on the move. I don't. Cody's gotten to a weird place because it seems like such a layup player, lefty outfielder. He's killing it. He plays great defense. He can play first base if you need. 
that <laughs> and I'll throw I'll throw our Yanks under the bus. Like I think the Yanks were supposed to be the ticket. <laughs> like Yanks had that position open. His dad played for the Yankees, but the Yankees have put themselves in a position where it's like probably shouldn't buy. I like the Phillies for him the most. Okay. Do they got a Interested. who Replaced who falls ca- out? Cave. Um let's see. You got Harper at first. That was big for them, moving Harper to first, opening up the DH, letting Schwarber go over there so they can add the outfielder, Yep, um, improve defensively. Like, that's that was so big for him to be able to do that. If Twins are going through that right now with Buxton. Yeah, Schwarber or Harper need a day or get banged up. Belly can take over at first. One of them can stay at uh, DH. Marsh and him move around the outfield. The thing with Belly is he can go anywhere because he can be – he's like – Basically a gold glover at multiple positions. He can play first base and win a gold glove. He can play outfield and win a gold glove. His bat has been great. He's he's I think he's like in the nines for an OPS in the season. Like he's doesn't strike out anymore. Yeah, he's doing it. He, it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes. But I think a lot of teams, I think the Rangers are a match for him as well. Like they're they're a team pretty much every team could use a, a Cody Bellinger type. That's the thing. I mean, for for the Phillies, that would be such a like a bonus piece, which is awesome. And I kind of, I love going that route. Like when your team identity is you're supposed to be a hitting team to throw Cody into that, it's awesome. But it's like what you just said, you could do the Texas Rangers. I could say the Diamondbacks. I could say, you could say almost every team. I guess I'm surprised that none of the contenders were like, that's a glaring hole. Like that's a weakness. Like I, I you know, the Phillies, they, they still hit. They're awesome. And you could make it even more of a strength, which I do like. But I, I'm surprised there's not the team that's like, whoa, plug him into our five hole. We just fixed a massive glaring hole on our team. That team doesn't jump out to me. I like them on the Phillies, too, because they just have fun names. Like, all the names on the Phillies are guys that have had, like, kind of like meme postseasons. Hmm. Like, you know, Trey Turner had the World Baseball Classic and the World Series in 19. Schwarber, obviously, is a meme player. Harper, fucking um, <laughs> Marsh wets his hair before he plays. Okay. You got... Uh, Castellanos. Castellanos is as meme of a player as you can. They're just kind of, like, full of fun little pockets of, Foley like... Reeser was names. healthy. Yeah, Reeser, if he was healthy. What about, um... What about the Brew Crew? Been asking for them to get a hitter for... Cubs Never. to Brew Crew trade? Do they do that? I don't know. That's uh, tough, right? Is it for rental? There's so many guys. I, I actually love the, the one thing that I feel like the expanded postseason has done. It's obviously kept more people in the wild card hunt, so it's made some of these front office cis- decisions difficult. You know, all of the Cubs and some of these teams that are kind of on the fence. Although I, I, the more I think about it, I think the Cubs are going to sell. Um, <clears throat> but it also, I feel like teams are more willing to give up because there is more demand. So the price is going to be a little bit higher. So like we're going to, I think we're going to have a pretty healthy trade deadline. I'm interested. I, I, I can't really gauge it at all. Cause it could be nothing. Um, no, it's not going to be nothing. I think teams are going to, teams are definitely going to do it. Then you add in, it, the Shohei caveat about teams like trying to get under the, the competitive balance tax uh, for next year. Like the Shohei thing, I think, is he's the biggest domino. And like teams are still like wondering if he's going to be available, what's going on with that. And so the last two trade deadlines have had awesome shit. Scherzer and Turner yeah. going was cool. Soto going last year and uh, Castillo going were like big, like you care about the return. I don't know. If we have a big, if we're going to see a big, you care about the return, they gave up their number one prospect, unless Shohei or Soto go. And I, right now, I don't see either of them actually being traded. I would love, I've talked about this about the Cardinals. Like, they have Goldschmidt, who has one more year next year. I think he is a possibility for them to go. I mean, Arenado's been mentioned. He's under control through 27. You know, he's got a healthy contract, but it's Nolan Arenado. One of those two guys, I think, could be like a surprise, like, holy shit, they, they actually did that. I, I would love Paul Goldschmidt to go somewhere. I think if you're the Cardinals, he could fetch, you know, you want pitching, you want you know, young pitching prospects, you know, bring back to bring back into your organization. You're going to have to give up somebody good. Yeah. Like it, trading, trading they, Jack Flaherty or Jordan Montgomery to bring in some pitching prospects, like 
they'd they'd bring some in. But I think if you send a guy like Goldie, then we're talking probably a little bit more of a um a, a what am I looking for? They'd bring back he'd bring back more just because of the extra year of control and he's an impact bat. Like this guy impacts the playoff situation greatly if he goes somewhere. I, I want to see, because this is our first time it feels like, last year it felt like there was a little more separation between the buyers and the sellers. This year it's not. That I'm wondering if we're just, if we're going to get more of the package deals. Like if I'm going to give you a real prospect, I need a starter and a reliever. Like I, I need to hit both of those in one move. Like um, where I think other years it's like you try to, pick and get the best bargain and give me the rental. But I don't know, man. It's a bizarre one. I, I do think there's a chance it's quiet. Um, it could be a lot of action, but just so much shuffling shuffling, and not like, oh, shit. But you don't you don't like the uh, the Phillies for belly? I, mean, I do, but I like any like, team for belly. But they're 27th, like, in left field production. If I'm the Phillies, I, I'd rather get a starting pitcher. Like if it if my options are I need to get if a they belly can do one or a rental starting trade. pitching, I'd rather get another starting pitcher. There's been a whole. Well, I agree with that. I just think being able to put Schwarber to DH and then have Belly and Marsh in the outfield like you're that helps every side of the ball. For a team that struggled with defense historically, yeah, they're 27th in like left field WAR and left field OPS. Here's the here's the options you know for like that left fielder outfield market. And tell me if Bellinger is your number one, and you have to add like value into that, what you have to give up. So we have a guy like Elaine Thomas, my one of my favorite players in the big leagues, obviously. Oh, Tommy Pham, not who's not having balls. a really good year. Uh, <laughs> Cody B, Brent Rooker, who's, you know, he's struggled since his big uh, first couple of months. Dylan Carlson, Tyler O'Neill. I think I think the mm-hmm. Cardinals will offload some of that outfield a Cardinals depth. Cardinals outfielder's getting moved. Yeah, Starling Marte, Mark Canna, Jerkson Profar. Um, so like there's, there's a, I feel like there's no, a lot. For return, Belly's the best because he's a rental. So you're not going to give up much. You're going to give up like a, a, a 15th to 20th prospect. You think that's all it's going to take right now with, with multiple teams get or vying for him? I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's more than the other rentals, but Ben Intendi was the number one left fielder last year. Good at defense, good at hitting. And I, I think they gave up a, their, was having their a good 12th year. best prospect and then two like 25 to 30th in the org, which aren't that's not a lot at all like so maybe maybe 10 through 15 or prospect but that's in your own organization that's not a ton yeah i'm uh, honestly I'll, I'll admit right now i am not a great like what's it gonna take to get this guy i have no idea what a GM's true a true, no a true man. a true rental you're you're never really giving up a top 10 prospect in your own organization for a true just this year rental it would have to be a, a multi-year deal and then you get it just jumps so much like even if the player's talent is a little less just the fact that you have control of him for another year sure of course yeah. and especially if he's Options. pre-arb and it's a cheap cost controlled year then like then you're looking at a top 10 but yeah i don't think belly's gonna cost that much but it, like some of the, like those cardinals they're gonna cost more than belly way more because you get him for two three years sure sure so Belly's like defense, offense, top of the order guy, and you're not going to give up that much. Cubs specifically are kind of interesting there. In the past, with their rentals, they've they have prioritized like one prospect they like. Like we're getting a little nerdy here, but like that was also specifically when they traded Rizzo to the Yankees, and did they trade it? No, Schwarber was traded from the Nats, but. Uh, that was also they were eating Rizzo's money, which they've shown a willingness to do. So maybe they'll eat some money for you. Yeah, and Rizzo told them prospect. to trade me to the Yankees. Yeah, there's Rizzo stuff. In the past, the Cubs have looked for one prospect they know they like. You know who I think is uh, – so we mentioned like the Rangers as I think a team that's going to be aggressive and kind of like under the radar aggressive. Another team that I have in that category, Jake's San Francisco Giants. Mm. Oh, not snakes. I'm the Giants are always a wild card, right? Like Dalton put on our sheet, like looking for a star. <laughs> it's like they went. That's yeah. I mean, they are. They he went been back like a decade and a half. Um, I don't know. I don't know. They just called up another top prospect, Luciano, the the young shortstop, and they called up Matos earlier this year. And it's like, I don't know. I 
it's it's the beauty of this week before the deadline. Is that the Giants showing their feathers and like we're the new young Giants and get ready for this? Or I don't know. Are they are they teasing the bait a little bit? Shohei come come up the road a little bit. I don't know. I I, I think the Giants are pretty. I I said the Giants didn't need a starting pitcher because their rotation was Webb, DeScalfani, Stripling, Cobb, and Wood, which they wanted going into the season. And Giants fans were like, "Dude, you don't know Giants ball. We need a starter." <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you and every other team technically, but um, I don't know what they do. They're they're um. I would just completely label them no clue because right now the bottom of their lineup is Bailey, Sable, Wisely, and Schmidt. Don't, Which, don't like, disrespect <laughs> Bailey or Sable. <laughs> I know. But, like, if you haven't had your claws sunk into this season, you'd be like, what? What's going on with the Giants? But, again, they're getting production from some of those guys, so I don't know what you do. I think uh, for them, if they're going after a pitcher, I think they're going to have to go, they're gonna go after someone that's what you, what you would describe as a playoff starter. That they go do that because that's what they want. They want to shore up. You know, pitching defense and the bats have been, the bats have been at points really good, but most I, I'd say for the most part pretty middling, mm. if you will. Um, overall, fifteenth in runs, so the definition of middling, I guess. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the, positionally, they're not like if you do uh, OPS by position or whatever. Like, you know, first base is the only, yes. only one that's top fifteen. In theory, they could add anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's they I can improve in a in a lot yeah, of areas. I, I like I like, I like them to be aggressive here. They've they've been looking to be aggressive. I mean, be e aggressive. Be e aggressive. Think about the off season they had. Yeah. I mean, they were linked to Arson Judge and Carlos Correa, <laughs> right? Like they're they're trying to get somebody to come there. Um, sure. So hey. whether it's a guy they think they could resign. Um, after they trade for him, extend him, they definitely are going to be in on Shohei in the offseason. It's uh, they're a sneaky, sneaky team sitting there, uh, four games back in the West, and I think they're right on the wild card as we speak. So, what are your Diamondbacks going to do, Jake? <laughs> oh, finally, trading Corbin Carroll, top of the list, Get out of here. Um, <laughs> I loved, uh, I told Dalton, I was like, Hey, you know, dig up, see what some of the beat reporters are seeing and, and, you know, maybe see if you find some fan tweets and his, uh, his fan tweet, uh, for the Diamondbacks is from himself. Um, and it <laughs> says, <laughs> please get bullpen and Dylan Cease would it be a dream. So that's, that's the fan update there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think they're going to play the rental arm game. They, they've been. They have been throwing a lot of young pitchers out there. I think with how good of a start to their season there is, I, I know they've been treading water a little bit, treadline season. But I still think, for what you said, the cost of an actual rental, like if it's Jack Flaherty, our guy, mm -hmm. like the cost for him is at this point a top 20 prospect. I'll make that Something trade. Like Diamondbacks that. are trading for Flaherty? Because, and part of the reason that I, I like it, a, everyone loves Giolito or Flaherty to the Dodgers because they're like, oh, they're going back to L.A. and the Dodgers have the sauce. I kind of like the Jack Flaherty wild card for the Snakes where, like, he could go there for two months and be nails. Like, he could give you, you know, your eight starts, a three-flat ERA, and buy in and be about it. We've also seen Jack Flaherty be a little wild this year, and he could not have a great two months. And it's like, well, we didn't, we didn't really sacrifice our farm. We got innings out of it. Jack was our guy that I see them landing – in that range with, like, a high, a higher upside guy, but also knowing it could not click. Um, but they're, they're not going to sacrifice their youth movement. They're ahead of schedule. Cardinals said they, they're just pitching, pitching, pitching. That's what yeah. the GM said about the trade. So if they trade uh, with the Diamondbacks, the Diamondbacks are going to give them Blake Walston. Okay. Walston. And then I... I 17th in their organization... Right now, pitching in Triple A. I don't know how he's doing. Is he punching tickets. That's what they're looking for in St. Louis now. They've changed their whole pitching <laughs> philosophy. Cardinal ways out. We want strikeouts. Um, <laughs> you, you guys are ten years too late on that one. And, and I think the other thing. Let me see if he's having. Uh, the, yeah. The, oh no, no, he just is his first okay. year in Triple A. Uh, Ninety-five innings pitched and sixty-one strikeouts. 
I, I think not I, enough for him. I think I did it in our trade draft too. I I think I think what makes a Cardinals trade go through and makes the Cardinals feel like a win is I do think they're going to trade Jordan Hicks this year. He's got I think two and a half left, or maybe it's one and a half. But if you're a team, you can say I added a a guy that throws 104 in our bullpen. Like you said, every team can literally add to their bullpen. <laughs> the okay. Back- yeah. Here you go. They're going to, instead of going for that guy that I just said, they're going to get Yu Min Lin. He's mm. in double A right now, but he's their 18th ranked prospect in the org, okay. which is for Jack Flaherty. I think you're going to get 15 through 18. Okay. And uh, in, he is pitching in uh, high A right now. Okay. Or he's, he's graduated up to double A, but in 60 pitch innings in high A, he had, uh, what the Fuck was it? Seventy six strikeouts, ninety strikeouts in seventy three innings at Double A. So you win. Nails. You Min Lin from Taiwan for Jack Flaherty. Okay, I don't hate it. Congrats, Jack Flaherty and Scottsdale. Look out, okay. Jack Flaherty is a Ray. He will be going to the Rays if he doesn't perform well, in the bottom oh of the bullpen. Gosh. He will be going to the. Uh, it does. It doesn't perform at the bottom of the starting rotation. He will go to the bullpen, and they will like. I, they will like. Awesome. Awesome. Uh oh. Because you brought up the Rays, hesitant always because it was Nightingale, but it sounds like they're very close to getting Lance Lynn. Wow. Now we're talking. He added Rays that Lance Lynn. Now we're talking. I was I was I was hesitant to hit the pass and button. He like, he added more details that Lynn has already told the White Sox he'd waive the no the ten team no trade for the Rays. Lance Rays Lynn is the, the trade team. before the trade. He's been that Perhaps. before. The Yankees used him that way in 2018. Um, he's the guy that goes early, eats innings, and then if you need to move him to long relief or something, you will. But I love Lance Lynn. I don't like the Rays. But Jack Flaherty also to the Rays. I love Lance Lynn for the Phils. Well, he's not well, going to. Well, duh, yeah. 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 I mean, that's Philly hot, Trev. That's what you've missed the whole time. Lance I like Lance Lynn, Lynn and Stroman going hot. to the same team and just, like, just <laughs> distracting that clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Lance Lynn to going to a team famously known to letting guys just be confident and be themselves. I think we're going to get a whole new level. Well, I guess the White Sox didn't care what anybody did. <laughs> well, Flaherty, well would, Flaherty would like that, too. Too much. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. Rays. I mean, they were looking for depth. That's depth. Fuck that. I love Lancelin. If He's, you're looking to get distracted this weekend, mm. Trev, you're a sneaky boxing guy. Yeah. Of Spence course. Crawford, Saturday night, July 29th, 8 p.m. Eastern time. PPV.com. It's the only streaming platform where boxing fans can participate in a live chat. You know who they can interact with, Trev? Dan Canobio. Dan Canobio. Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri and... Trevor Plouffe. Jimmy's legendary boxing writer, Lance Pugmire. Oh, I They'll think- all be in the chat, yucking it up, boxing folks. Spence Crawford is one of the big ones of the year, and you know PPV.com is where you go to get it, you can stream it on all, download the app, put it on all your devices, um, and enjoy it. It's one of the big ones. Nothing like a big fight night. Click the link in the description. Order Spence Crawford on ppv.com right now. Lance Pugmire is such a, like, a Western book series name. Okay. Like, a, like you know, like a modern day Lance m- Pugmire. Marshall. Yeah, I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Pugmire. Uh, he's like the sheriff's assistant. Bad yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. bad guy that has a good guy moment. Yeah, or a good guy that's like one. That's bad like guy your moment. life. Yeah. <laughs> you describe yourself. Yeah. No, not even. Where are we dropping next, boys? I feel like we've kind of bounced around here because at this point, nothing's really happened. We've had it. What? Let's name some of the trades we've had. Araldis Chapman goes to the Rangers. Awesome. Oh, yeah. That might be fucking one of the like most. Um, it might be a big one. It is a big one. No, yeah. but I, it's like, you know, it happens so early, but like, well, biggest trade of the deadline. It's the like season. the Rangers in the postseason and Chapman's doing what he's yeah. doing. Like, that's like, oh, fuck. They got ahead of that. He went there. Uh, a couple of relievers go to the Braves. It was Pierce Johnson and Taylor Hearn go to the Braves. That's great for their bullpen depth. Now we have Lance Lynn to the Rays. Has anybody else been traded of note? Kike. Kike to the Dodgers. Just Lance Lynn hasn't night. happened happened yet, but... Okay, maybe Lance Lynn has traded to the Rays. I'm always hesitant with 
who reported that. Man, it's just like it, it. Maybe that. Maybe that is. You know, sometimes this happens. Like where a guy gets traded, then all of a sudden we get a bunch going because the front offices feel like it's time. Uh, we've been bouncing all over the place because they're just. I feel like there is a lot of buyers out there. At least a lot of teams that are presenting themselves. Jose as Castillo buyers. traded. Okay. Uh, from the Padres to the Marlins. That's right. For cash considerations, which is a terrible name. I want the Padres to get dumb. Like, I kind of want them to go for Cody. Just They've be been like, dumb. I know. I mean, not in a bad way, but like, they're in all, an awesome way. Their offseason last year was one of the dumbest, in a good way, off seasons ever. And just, I. You're available, we'll take you. I'm gonna How much you want? All six of it? Six games back of a wild card as we speak. Drive home Jim's point a little bit. But um, baseball's the most irrational sport. Oh, it happened once in 1978, so it'll just happen I'd again. Let's kill our farm. Take a chance. I have them as... That's why it's a romantic sport. Yeah. Cole Reagan's, the main piece in the Chapman trade, was the Rangers' 19th prospect. There was also a 17-year-old thrown in the trade. So 17? 17. 19th prospect for Chapman? Yes. That's okay. like, yeah. That's, it's like a 15 through 20 for rentals, basically. Interesting. I, I I did like a whole Except deep dive into the last two years, but yeah, well, yeah, there's game changing rentals, uh, but even Shoei's not going to be as much as you think for just Shoei's fascinating because he's two guys. We've never yeah, seen so it before, so rentals. it's really unprecedented. I, like, yeah, it's, it's just no idea. Yeah, but I, I my my belief is if it's a rental, it's like ten through fifteen take or fifteen through twenty take your pick. What we'll prospect do you want? Oh man, or, you know. It also depends on your organization. Yeah. Like the Dodgers um, gave away a lower, like they were, they gave away like a 21st because their organization is better. They have that where, yeah. Stigma. Yes. The Yankees or last year didn't have a ton of top 100 prospects. So they had to give a tw- their 12th for um, Benny. Just, you know. All right. Who did that? I mean, there's no, like, return yet for Lance Lynn, so we don't know anything about that, even if it's true, I guess. I mean, he's a rental, right? And his ERA has been through the moon. So, like, that that's a guy that, yeah, man. I mean. That's not going to be no much. You get a lottery ticket. Um, I think. It's a decent get, amount of money. Yeah, just, see, if, see if the White Sox are eating money. Circling back to hitters a little bit, because we didn't mention, I, I can see Jeff Passan and everyone's article the day after now in the winner's column. It's whoever trades for Jamer Candelario, because he's been, he, he's been as good as Cody Bellinger. He's just not as familiar as a name. Um, he's been really good at third base, uh, defensively and offensively. He's a switch hitter. I think he can also play first. Um, the Marlins and the Brewers seem like the two hole at third base teams, uh, which I think that's interesting. Two teams we begged for to get hitting to. And like you mentioned with that rental price tag, I don't know, man. That When they do winners and losers of the trade deadlines, I promise you whoever gets Jammer Candelario, they're going to be like, you might not know this guy as well, but he's been great. Like, Shut up, pass him. <laughs> Fight another tree. Fight another tree. Okay. Um. Yeah, the the twins like sort of need a third baseman. Although the plan now, because they've had a f- few young guys hit, uh, like Ed- Eddie Julian has kind of mm. been the second baseman there. They're planning on may- maybe moving Jorge Polanco over to third base. Like they were one team that you could kind of say, yeah, they need third ba- a third baseman as Royce Lewis is out. Um, I like that. I don't think it's gonna happen to the twins, but Candelario is definitely gonna go somewhere. Trying to think where he could go. Fish or crew? Fish or crew? The Marlins are the fi- are the Marlins. What are they, what are they going to do? They've I mean they they sent down Yuri Perez because to to limit his innings right, and since they've done that, it's just been bad for them. Yeah, and they I mean I like the whole that. thing's been offense. Um, so at this point, what are you what are you doing? If you're sending guys down, you're saying we're not really prioritizing this year. We're prioritizing this guy's future. But let's add a bat and to see what happens. I mean, you, I think they're in. They are in a playoff spot still, I believe. 
They're supposed to. No, they're one game back now of a, the last wild card. I don't know, man. Like they, for a while, I believe they were going to be adding. I just don't see it happening now. Wow, treadline. It's treadline. But they, it felt like not even their play, man. Like it's like their decision making. Like hey, like w- with them, they have all these young starting pitchers. They're trying to you know navigate to the future. But at at some point, dude, like you have what every single team that wants to contend is looking for young controllable starting pitching. Like you gotta, you gotta say, all right, let's, let's, let's bring in the bats. Let's make the splash move. Let's give up some of these prospects. Let's stop hoarding the pitchers and let's go make a complete roster. Right. You got to remember their manager last year uh, and part owner heard their plans and said, I'm out. Yeah. I want to go try and win somewhere. It's pretty nuts. Jonathan India play a little third base. Give him a young starter. Bada bing, bada boom. Fort I, I want another Marsh for a hoppy type trade. I just want those to become normal. Right. And I don't know why. Jazz just because they're for just Zach Allen. fucking crazy. Because you're just kind of messing with a guy's life. But I mean, six years of control. Yeah. Nuts. Look at Mickey Moniak now. Those Angels and Phillies. Who are the Angels and Phillies going to trade? You think they should trade another one? They're trading. They're trading partners. Yeah, they love each Show other. Them. Reds and oh, Mariners no, love each other. No, they There's tr- your pitcher and your hitter. No, too many put stars Noah's, for put one no, club. Put Noah's song in as well. Noah's songs in the deal. Wait, I'll look at the. I'll look at the Phillies. Okay. And you're looking at the who? At the what? Angels. Angels. I think they could find a spot for Mike Trout. Finally goes to Philly. Oh my god. Hey, he'd be ecstatic. Give me a nuke. Oh, my God. Nuke deadlines are bust, man. I don't know if we're getting... Can we kill kill this deadline if there's not someone above Cody Bellinger trading? Yeah, it's going to happen, guys. I'm telling you, I think this thing is going to go off. You're in on it. This thing is going to go off, yeah. I I, I really believe it. I do. Um, Okay, the Phillies need help. I'm just looking at their stats. Third base, not getting a lot of production for third base for Philly. Yeah, but you got a guy there that you yeah, can play. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to make a trade. Yeah, the, the outfield they could they could move some guys around because now Bryce, <laughs> you know, they, he they had the seventh lowest WAR at first base, but now Bryce is playing there, so that's gonna that takes care of that. DH is open, so now Schwarber's gonna be able to move there. So now you have Castellanos and Marsh, and then yeah, you need another outfielder to kind of step in, and yeah. that makes a lot of sense to go do that. There. Angels. Need first baseman and pitching. You don't you don't like what you've seen from Trey Cabbage? Outside of his name. No. I don't there's six they're uh, <laughs> you know, the other they're like twenty fifth in OPS at first base. So I'm just trying to make a trade. I'm sure he's a nice cat. Last name Cabbage, man. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. That's tough for me. Food names are big and if LA. he writes a kid's book, I'm in. She's Otherwise, like, I'm not. Food out. names are big in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> Trout, salmon. Those are animal That's names. Cabbage. <laughs> don't, don't get mistaken. Those are animal names. Well, that's what are animals? They're food. <gasps> hey, throw uh, blood on you. I'm going to throw blood on your face. <laughs> okay. PETA hates you. I need some iron. <laughs> Give me some ARB trades. Jake Cave, holy shit! Jake Cave still has two years of ARB. Baseball's fucked up. Jake Cave, uh, what a weird career he's had. had. A great, has, I don't know what his numbers ended up at the AAA level, uh, but they were massive this year. That, that was that was a talking point in Philly for quite Jake some Cave time. Breaks. Okay, all right, found my even trade. Jake Cave for Jared Walsh. Why not? They both are the same in arbitration, same in service time. They're both thirty years old, uh, new scenery, and just fucking do it. Why not? You're easy. the Phillies and the Angels, and you make trades. That's easy. Todd Zalecki, who covers the Phillies famously, uh, says they're looking for a right-handed bat to help the lineup. It doesn't have to be a superstar, but somebody who can give the Phillies a little more pop to an already deep lineup. So, Mike Trout? He won dot one. Why do they want a right-handed Phillies bat? Triple H. Hunt Cave. Yeah. Jake hey, Cave. We've, we've talked about... Is that Toddler you said? If <laughs> Todd Zalecki. If... If Shohei Otani didn't exist, whoa, <coughs> scary, different simulation. Not into that. Not into it. Hunter Renfro would be an awesome piece for the Phillies. 
Okay. Righty pop six hole playing corner outfield. What's his situation? I'll make a trade. Rental. True rental? Yeah. Oh, let's <laughs> fucking do it then. Just ask. Do it for Nola. <laughs> oh, no. I got one. Josh Harrison. And um, he, I got one, and he wouldn't have to move anywhere, and he's controllable. Okay. My Seems favorite player, new favorite player in the big leagues, you know who I'm going with here. Right-handed outfielder. Reese Hoskins. Lane Thomas. Mm. South Freelick. Lane's got years. He's got years. He's a Tennessee boy, which don't know what that means. Uh, but this year, he's having a really good year. He's got 16 homers, hitting 293, stolen 12 bases. He, he might cost a, a, a decent amount because you got those years and he's cheap. I like a team buying into Lane Thomas. His baseball savants through the roof. The, the Nationals do not have a two-and-a-half-year timeline that, like, if you can cash that in. I'd cash that in. Okay. Cash out. It was found money as is. That's your trade. The Cardinals prospect. Lane Thomas, Randy, Adelise. Dang. The Royals should trade all their bullpen. Yeah. They waited too long. They waited too long. Yeah. Well, they did one early and then. Yeah. They, w- they will. Uh, Lane Thomas to the Twins makes a lot of sense too. Oh my God. That sounds God. lame. They no, they need someone. They need a uh, someone to hit lefties. That's just for some reason they Lane can't hit Thomas lefties. Thomas is just a Midwest name. He's from That's he's me- from Texas or it's, Nashville, it's Tennessee. Meat and potatoes, as far as names go. Well, you think the good people of Minnesota would like Lane Thomas, huh? I do. I do. Yeah, too. yeah, because <laughs> yeah. he feels right safe. In. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a secure. What does that even mean, dude? I like they brought when, in Carlos Correa. This I is not like, like we're going. I with, liked when they Eddie in, Rosario. They brought was in one of the biggest sexy. villains in all of baseball, which yeah. he shouldn't be. We'll talk about that more. Now but we don't he even is, know. He's boot ever. I he's like, there, so don't tell me they only go for the safe, nice I like, guy. They I, went I for the bad boy. They, only they go, went for the bad I didn't boy. Say Preacher's they, daughter went for the bad boy. I didn't say they only go. I just said that's a safe, cozy name. I like these ain't your granddad's twins. They got. Coach Trev in the booth. You're right. Mixing Carlos up. Correa, Byron Buxton. Those are sexy yeah. names. The Minnesota Twin moms went from Trevor Plouffe at mm. third base and like, ooh, yep. Then they were like Eddie Rosario. A little, wow. little cat scratch cat for me. It. A little, okay. <laughs> Lane Thomas. So it's back to Now they're like back, sad again. Yeah. Which is As the bad boy level, he's a little under me You're or above me? You're sexier than Lane. Trevor Plouffe, it feels yeah. French. I had, I had a... Nickname, Big old beard. Laner. What if I told you Lane Thomas co-owns Knox Cabinet Co., a home remodeling business with his sister? I love it. I need some cabinets in my garage. Please, Welcome to Minnesota, Lane. Please marry all of our daughters. <laughs> Welcome to Minnesota, Stand up, Lane. gentlemen. Tasker Hernandez. What's he going to do? Oh, no. See, that's the, the mar- sexy okay, Minnesota name. I think we're... That's we're, the sexy. We've been kind of all over the place, which is fine Minnesota because loves sex. this is this is the trade deadline. The Seattle Mariners are very interesting to me uh, at this trade deadline because they have some pieces, but they're firmly in contention still. I believe they're getting their butts kicked by the Twins. <laughs> the they twins. love making moves. They do love making moves. Right now, they're four and a half back of the wild card, and they're seven and a half back of the division. So okay, they're a team that. Could really go either way. There's a lot of fun players there. They have some needs. They need some offense to go, but they could trade some of their offense. They have some. If they decide to really go for it and actually go and try to get like impact, impact, they have like the starting pitching depth to do it. I think they're a sneaky another Cody landing spot. Right now, they had Pollock. And Kelnick go yeah, down they, in the they past had, They week. went down, yeah. Right now, at least their starting left fielder is Cade Marlowe. He just came up, yeah. I think he has huge forearms. Okay. Well, <laughs> Which adds well to you did think value. Lane Thomas was bald. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, Cade Marlowe. Yeah, Cade Marlowe. So, Teoscar and, and Julio. In, Julio's in center, Teoscar's in right, and then you mentioned Cade and Cade whoever Marlo they have going there. loves his hair, I and could, he should. I mean, Cade Marlowe's kind of a hot dude. Wow, Ooh. nice teeth. Fuck, you don't trade that guy. That's he's, like Abercrombie model. He's guy. from Orange County. Book it. Let's look right now. Ooh, Georgia boy. Book Is he it. a Georgia boy? Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. That yeah, makes yeah. sense too, a little bit. He's got that handsome Georgia boy smile. Yeah, like yeah. he wears the what are those boat shoes? All the time. Yeah, Jake was yeah. a boat shoe guy for a while. It's a big kind of over, <laughs> kind of over boat shoes to be it's honest fine. with you. Well, you Unless you're like on can't a come boat. on my boat. Yeah, boat shoes have come and gone. Now all the kids wear those ugly loafer Crocs, but they're like Croc slides. Luke had them yeah. on, and then I saw them everywhere. You know who has it's it? Like, Joe Ryan has those on. It's like Ooh. ugly shoe wearers in. Yeah. Yeah. Is that everything? I, don't I mean, know. we'll we'll clear it up more after it happens. Then yeah, we'll we're going to have a sure. big in-person episode. Then we'll know for sure. On the day of the deadline. Is that Wednesday? It's Tuesday. So we'll Yeah, react. we're coming in here after we're doing our super secret matching thing. green outfits. Yeah. Jim, you've got me more. <laughs> It'll be a big day. <laughs> you've got me more excited for the Phillies deadline. Okay. Awesome. Another team that... Just doesn't get mentioned and can do anything they want. Houston. Relievers. Like they can they can add anything and it makes sense. Um No, I yeah. mean they don't they can yeah, they can go get relievers. You can see what you know, if they want to add a bat, they can. You know. I, I know they just invested a lot of money in a first baseman, but mm. hasn't really worked out for them. Yeah, I mean, they, they, there is many ways to go, and they do have they do have some depth there. Interesting. Starting rotation. God, Lance Lynn seemed like a good idea for them. I've heard Verlander back to Houston rumblings. Mm, now we're talking. I need that juice. I need that like, spice. That will be interesting. He's pitched really, just, really well. Just says the Mets are a disaster. Send me back. The Mets and Yankees deserve to have zero talk. The the no baseball fun. world deserves a a off season or trade deadline where no one uses the Mets or Yankees as well. We're using just because they stink and they're just muted and personalityless and boring as shit. Both teams, so much fun talent that should be fun and exciting, and you talk about, and they're all just like wet newspaper, boring. I don't know what happened. The city used to be a baseball town, and it's just like, bleh. so. This time, Verlander last year. and Scherzer stay on the Mets and just. Bleh. So, fucking la- Subway Series this time. Okay, last so year. get over Mets, Yankees, gross. How about somebody that the Yankees fans don't want to hear about? Appreciate the Boston you. Red Sox, who are far back in the East, or eight games back in the East, but only one and a half games back of the wild card. Obviously, starting pitching is something they could look towards. They've kind of come on as of late, the last week, week and a half. Like, they've had, uh, you know, a nice start to after the All-Star break. I wouldn't change any plans or <laughs> if they have plans. I wouldn't change what any. What are their plans? It's not like they have their, like, waiting yeah. a window of prospects to yeah. come up, right? They, like, they, 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 they should think that. They should be the, like, and you know, be. and they sold Kike. Like, a, like a small retooling. Um, I don't think they should be, like, out there buying anything crazy. Uh, they should, because it's almost like, this team, this it's team is one like, of the best offenses in baseball right now. This team right is now. fun right now. They're, they're, they're performing well. They have a chance if they get into the wild card. That's a success because they weren't really like supposed to be a juggernaut. And then it's almost like a roll the dice. I wish the Yankees are in a similar spot. I wish I had the feelings of like, hey, let's roll the dice. Like we're a little better than we want. Instead of like, let's back this with everything. Let's go and get people and, you know, maybe ruin the a next wave of guys or a couple more prospects. But are are they are they are they a, a good starting pitcher away from being able to take over and get hot think, in a playoff scenario? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like to be sometimes honest, you I don't know. Just, is their defense getting any better? I haven't watched them in a while. <laughs> this offense is third and average, fourth and OBP, sixth and OPS, fifth and runs. Their so. offense has been great. Their defense and starting pitching was like atrocious. I don't know if the defense has gotten better. Fourth and bullpen ERA, which isn't exactly the best thing to look at, um, but their starting pitching obviously is kind of where the weakness lies. You know, if they add, it, they, I mean, they truly, and you can add an impact starter if it's a rental, like you guys are talking about, for a, a 10 to 15 prospect in your organization. That firmly, to me, puts them in the hunt the rest of the way. So, like, they will be vying for a playoff spot, really doing it. And then they're a team that if you get them in the playoffs and, like, they find their stride with the three or four relievers that they like, and then you have three pitchers. They have that already. 
three three pitchers, then you're like, okay, this is a team that, and we've seen it from them before too. Like they just get hot at the right time. Nick Pavetta, we've seen him become a freaking playoff superstar before. So like, bring Erod home. You're saying. I'm saying if you if you put a, a starter on that team, it looks a lot different, and you could kind of dream upon a Red Sox team that's like, oh, shit, like probably don't want to play those guys. Okay. You don't have faith in Brennan Bernardino? I have faith in, you know, just another starting pitcher going there, like a Lucas Giolito. Lance Lynn. I, th- I think it totally changes the outlook of that team. You go Pax, Bayo, whoever they bring in. And you Do they run, even you leave, have you four starters offense, right now? You leave the offense alone, and you bring in a rental pitcher. And if you get magic, cool. If not, you move on. Okay. Who are their – what is their rotation right now? They are all over the place, but Pax, Bayo, Cutter Crawford kind of are doing that. They have more. They're saying, Paxton starting. So they have yeah. four starters right now, and they're doing bullpen days a lot. I think Pavetta's been bouncing back and forth. Like, they're listing him as the starter against the Giants. Um, but, yeah. I mean, they might <laughs> you might just want to get an arm to get through the season anyways. Like, <laughs> it's a dangerous game. Erod. Joe Jacks. All right. All right. Goodbye forever. See ya. World Series champion is the Philadelphia Phillies. I also had the Phillies. Jesus. I had Phillies Yankees. That's not looking great what? right now. Believe. Be romantic. It could happen. You see 1978? Yep. Nope. Damn, that's my true Braves are also really good. Braves Phillies. LCS. Is it possible? Twins win it all. <laughs> <laughs>